Hi everyone, welcome back to your uh, weekly astrology reading. So, uh, this week is so packed that if I sit here and tell you what's going to be coming in, it's just probably going to waste five minutes of your time. <laughs> so I'll just start with saying that I'm going to review a little bit before uh, you know, New Year's Eve, because there, it's just such a packed uh, evening. And, and then I'll take you through that first, first week of 2023. Meanwhile, just wishing you the best, the happiest new year. And uh, let me show you these charts. It, it's uh, just so much on top of the full moon coming in Cancer. It, but it's, it looks like a good week to me. <laughs> okay, hold on. Okay, so I went back to Saturdays for the purpose of, um, so uh, 9.08 p.m. Pacific time. I went back because I wanted to see the exact time that, that uh, <laughs> Venus would bump up against Pluto. And this is why I want everyone to be especially careful if you do go out on, um, on this evening on New Year's Eve because uh, for the time being we have we well we're going to have for quite some time Pluto in this square down here to Eris okay so Eris is known to be uh, we could call her the goddess of trouble <laughs> They call her the goddess of discord. But uh, for me, I feel like a lot of it has to do with the courage that it takes to, to incarnate as a woman. You have to be willing to be a lot more vulnerable. And because she's in Aries, and I mean, I don't know. I, I, I never look to see how long she actually stays in one sign. But uh, she takes 566, or maybe it might be 556, I forget, somewhere <laughs> well over 500 years to get around the zodiac. Whereas Pluto takes between, oh, 243 to 248 usually. Generally 243, but we're talking elliptical orbits, you know, that aren't circular. They kind of, they might spend a little more time over one sign, you know, and let a bunch of souls come in with Pluto. Uh, and then tighten up, like when Pluto was in Scorpio, not that many, it wasn't there for that long. But like the Pluto in Cancer generation, the Pluto in uh, Leo and Libra, uh, and even Virgo, quite a, quite a, you know, long period of years. I'm... Um, you know, it's anywhere between, with Pluto, anywhere between 11 and 25 years, I think, uh, in between, or in one sign. But Eris has been there all my life, and um, I think started out around 8 degrees or so, and, and, you know, I'm pushing 70, and it's only at 23. So anyone else my age would have... Uh, Eris in Aries in your chart. So wherever she is in your chart, it's where you uh, <laughs> you will find your courage. Mine's in the 12th. So it's like, I don't, you know, I have a really short fuse when it comes to people trying to tell me how to connect with, with divinity and, and um, any subconscious uh, games and hidden enemies, things like that. I just, yeah. And it gives you a lot more courage in the 12th house for, uh, you know, the need for compassion. I'll stand up for kind of, I'm more of like the underdog kind of a person, I guess. So anyway, enough about me. I didn't mean to do all that. Uh, with Pluto square Eris, this, you know, as the months and years, weeks go by that I do these readings, you'll see that this will, this will stay, Okay. But this, this <laughs> Venus is, and it actually should go to this line here. It's one of the three lines. So we have Venus and Mercury. And that line is actually here. And the sun is moving towards, the sun right now is in a square to Chiron. We'll talk about that in a moment, but for all intents and purposes, we want to focus in on these three. So 
Mercury, well, Venus had its, already had its little talk with Mercury earlier. You know, last week we saw that, and the week before. Now that it's on the other side, it's bumping up against Pluto. So when Venus was talking to Mercury, and Mercury's the messenger, so Mercury's going to get some good messages from Venus. And Venus said, hey, uh, only the facts, only the truth, and if you're dishonest, and if you're not in your integrity, especially with Mercury retrograde now, you know, as of, um, uh, what is it? Actually, today, I'm doing this reading on Thursday, I think is, let me look at my phone real quick for the, yeah, 29th, today. <laughs> Mercury went retrograde today, so early this morning. So now, with Venus on the other side, it, remember, Venus is about values, and she wants harmony. She doesn't want to mess around. She doesn't want to waste time. She doesn't want to go in any direction that doesn't bring peace and beauty. And uh, so she she cares, and she also compares, I guess I could say, uh, you know, what matters most. She's all about our relationships. She's all about pleasure and, you know, hopefully positive pleasure because there is negative pleasure too, like the, you know, the... People that they're you know they you know who they are, the dirty politicians who are not in alignment with RBG. <laughs> Thank you, Melissa and Marie, for sending this to me. One of my touchstones. So anyway, and thank you, Heidi, for sending me the dragonfly and a bunch of other little critters. <laughs> um, when when we're dealing with uh, integrity. And things that we want to, people and things, and um, it's not as much ideas because it's more in the body. It's more, Venus is more about our, what we, what matters most to us and what reflects back to us in life, uh, our self-worth. And if, and, and it's also our attitude, you know, towards women and the feminine and squaring uh, Eris at this point now is bringing things up into, and it has been, it was, you know, last week as well, too. But now that it's bumping up against Pluto, it's like, ruh row if there's any trouble. Women are just not having it anymore. Our attitudes towards women need to change. Women are not less than, they're not dumber. Uh, in fact, oftentimes it's the other way around. Uh, women deserve to be paid the same amount of money for doing the exact same job, but oftentimes they're paid 30% less. And if you're a black woman or a woman of any type, any color, you can knock that down even more, and it's absolutely ridiculous. It just irons me to no end. So that we can see also with this long-term transit here, with this sextile to uh, Saturn. This is going to be lasting for quite some time there. Saturn brings in new rules for humanity. And it's not retrograde anymore. It's, it's in the process of getting out of, its, um, out of its shadow from the retrograde. So, um, but you know, that, that'll be done by the end of, um, end of the month in January, you know, this month coming up, uh, the first month of the year. So we're in it right now. Sextiles bring in opportunities. So opportunities for the courage of women to come forth if they're willing to do it. We always have to fight. Even the men, we always have to fight for justice, right? I mean, we could look at RPGs. <laughs> we could look at Ruth Bader Ginsburg's entire life was fighting for justice. So, um, so with Mercury and Venus together in Capricorn, and then Venus, now Mercury's going to catch up too. It, well, it'll, it'll only, no, I'm sorry. It went to 24. I forgot. It's going to go back to 8. Uh, but later on, when it goes direct, you know, in I think it's January 18th, if I remember correctly. I have that chart over there somewhere. But uh, it's going backwards. We're reviewing things with Mercury, how we think, how we synthesize information that can bring in some concrete values with uh, Capricorn. And and then, you know, it'll go direct, and I think it'll be like after, um, I'm, I'm going to guess 
after, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's after Valentine's Day, because I think it's February, February 7th or something that Mercury gets out of the, uh, you know, retrogradation zone. It's going to go back, back, you know, like back and then back this way. And then, and then it'll, it'll bump up against Pluto. There's going to be some major, uh, <laughs> It, major pieces of information about dirty politicians and and we're going to be feeling good about how how hard we've worked to stay in our integrity and fight for the truth and fight for justice so that is especially true when we have mercury in this sextile here to neptune okay so because neptune just think of neptune as being source energy for all beings, uh, think and feel into uh, the humanitarian crisis with the, you know, being a refugee. Uh, in Pisces, it's definitely about refugee, but definitely about immigration. I uh, think in all terms of compassion and love and artistic beauty, and uh, it can it can sensitize us to what we need to be sensitive to, or eh, we can go the wrong way and use things to numb us out because we can't take it yet. Um, my deep felt, deep, oh, that's not the word. My experience has been that as long as I'm not going to hurt myself or someone else, there should be no reason in the world to be afraid of what I feel. So I always say, just let yourself go there. Unless you're going to do something, you know, violent towards yourself or anyone else, you know, then, then you're, you know, that's, that's not, that's another whole thing. But it's not good to repress our feelings. It's not good to repress our emotional bodies. And so we can dissolve lifetimes with Neptune, dissolve lifetimes of false beliefs, and with this connection up here to, to Mercury, I'll just put a little blue line there so you can zone in. Mercury to Neptune, this gives us the opportunity to make new choices because we want a whole different reality. We want to bring in a new reality in 2023. And I can't think of a better lineup for, I mean, this, we always have the sun this time of year in Capricorn, but to have Mercury and Venus at the same time and all getting ready to bump up against um, Pluto. And in fact, 9.08 p.m. New Year's Eve, Venus conjunct Pluto. Now, these can be intense boundaries that are being set because Capricorn is ruled by Saturn. You know, we've got the Saturn boundaries over here to Eris. All this square, all the, we've got this tension field to Eris, calling for all women to stand up and fight for their rights, and fight for the rights of children, and fight for the rights of everyone, and men, women, and children. Does or however, whatever way any person identifies, fight for a humanitarian rights, and you know, peacefully though, of course. Otherwise, you know. I think we're past those days. We don't live in those countries where we're going to get away with something like that. But anyway, the tension field that we have going here between these three planets, can, and especially even after Mercury and Venus move way past Capricorn, Pluto's still going to be there. And Pluto is power. Pluto empowers those who are in their um, integrity, their inner authority. People who don't give themselves away to anyone. Big pharma, government, you know, you run, you rule your own life, but you live within the laws. But, you know, with Neptune, it's got to be within the laws of love, right? So, so that's why I wanted to bring that chart out. Now, I'll go ahead and move forward because, you know, we're supposed to start with Sunday, right? And here we are. So you can see Venus has moved past Pluto. And and I, I'm hoping that any intense encounters you had in, with, you know, issues of power within relationship because of Pluto and Venus. Remember, Venus relationship, Pluto is power. Any intense confrontations because of the squares down here to Eris. 
uh, any of this, I'm hoping, this is 6 a.m. Pacific, over here to Eris, right? 23, 23, oops, got to include Mercury, and the sun will catch up. This is really important. All, all of this is still, you know, continuing on. It's opening up the new year. That's really important. So, uh, and of course, Neptune sextile, Mercury is staying there. Um, Saturn sextile, Eris is, is uh, holding space, staying there for us as well. Uh, Chiron in the square, notice how Chiron's here at 11. Uh, sextile's the sun up here. This, this is um, really important for, because remember, I can't seem to draw today. The, the sun shines a spotlight, okay? And what's it shining on? It's connecting with Chiron. And Chiron is our deepest wounding, but as we work through that deeper wounding, we open up to our gifts. And the gifts of Chiron and Aries are courage. And here, here we are with Aries, right? Now, Chiron's going to, it's not retrograde anymore, and it's going to eventually catch up with Aries. And I would say, people better be holding on to their hats because women are not taking it anymore, <laughs> right? We need to get Roe v. Wade back, and we need to codify Roe. Thank goodness. Thank all the voters. Thank everyone who voted uh, except for AOC, I don't know what she's, I mean, I know why she did it, and I don't even want to go into it, but we got the Electoral Count Act passed, so we basically can't have another January 6th riot. I am so grateful they put those laws into place, and that is, you remember when we had Saturn, remember all the months, you know, I was talking about before Saturn squaring Uranus over here, and it was squaring the north node, and the south node, it was up here with the T-square. Well, they got that done. They were working, government officials working in the light, thinking outside the box and thinking way ahead into the future, and thinking about uh, the safety of humanity. Those were the ones working in the light. They were behind the scenes putting powers, putting protections in place, using their power and putting protections in place for us. Now, that is how government is supposed to work. That is exactly how they are supposed to earn their, their you know, at least, what, 175 grand a year on top of their pension and uh, a completely different health plan than any of us will ever get. And um, you don't even... Uh, I don't even know if they need social security with their pension. It's it's um, and and I think it's I don't I don't know if they get both. I'd have to look that up, but maybe you guys know. So anyhow, this is the way Saturn is supposed to work. Now the GOP didn't do anything like that. The GOP was working in the dark. And now the dark of um, Aquarius is cold heartedness, and they don't give a crap about anybody but themselves, and they put themselves above everyone else. And superiority is the name of the game, right? The little peons don't deserve anything because they're not in charge. We are. That's what the GOP did. They wanted to take away Social Security and Medicare, and there's nowhere even getting near. Uh, <laughs> no thoughts to even get close to, you know, a health plan for all. So... I still want them to pass the Presidential Powers Act. There are so many things I still want Biden to do. I want him to add a whole bunch of um, judges. I want him to put a, I want that number to flip in SCROTUS. And I want um, the Voting Rights Act passed. The Electoral Count Act, Electoral Reform Act, that was great, but we need the Voting Rights Act passed. And we need, like I said, to codify Roe. And there are probably six, half a dozen other ones that I'm not even thinking about right now that you know, need to be in there. So this stellium in Capricorn setting off the year is connected to the courage we need to hold space for and prove to teach them that we matter. 
that it doesn't matter how young, how small, how vulnerable we are as a fresh start, you know, like just imagine a, the, the fresh little sprout, you know, that just comes out of the earth and goes, or like a flower. <laughs> Flowers pop open and they just go, I'm here. <laughs> just that presence of that beauty, that um, ability to assert your unique individuality is what Chiron in Aries is all about. And so when you know your worth up here with Venus bumping up against Pluto and now on the other side, Mercury's, you know, still within talking range. But and then the same sign, maybe if, if it were even all the way back over here to zero degrees Capricorn, maybe that's still within radar, right? Or, or in polar opposite or a square. There's still connections or any of the other aspects that connect. So this is weighing heavily on everyone. The need to be, the need to work hard, to have your own sense of duty, to be self-responsible, to work to control your own life and your own time, and not let narcissistic sociopaths, malignant narcissistic sociopaths, uh, past life slave owners, slave traders, no less, and people, many of them who are part of the, as Sarah Kinsinger calls it, the transnational crime syndicate, transnational money laundering crime syndicate. So that's what we're up against. That's what we're fighting for. And when you know your worth, it makes it so much easier. You're not going to cower in fear. So, yeah. So there's that. So we're holding space for that. Now, the other thing that is uh, all week long, uh, let's see, we talked about so Neptune squaring Mercury. That reinforces that talking to source, you know, your, all, all the, oops, the creativity of Neptune there. This is really important right here. This is, this is your ability to sit down and meditate or sit down and ask for inspiration and get some visualization going on and then do something with it. You know, with, with Mercury, we're having to link things together. We're having to, you know, find the patterns that connect. And then, and then we're sometimes, once we get the data or the information download, then we have to synthesize it, you know, we have to analyze it, we have to make sense of it. But often that will come within the download too. You'll, you'll just be sitting there. It's, it's like the way I look at a chart. And it's like, oh, that's that. Oh, yeah, that. Look at that. You know, it, it comes together eventually. But you have to sit. You have to make, in Capricorn especially, you have to sit and make that conscious decision to connect to source. And it's inside of you right? All creativity is inside of us. So, so yeah. Okay. Saturn to Eris, we spoke about. I'm not going to color in and make any more mess here. Chiron to the, Chiron in the Quincunx to the South Node we had last week. And again, there's another way to connect in with your past life wisdom with the South Node of Scorpio there. Today, we do have the Sun in this, uh, so notice, oops, the sun shining a spotlight here, connecting to Mars, but they don't talk very well together. Capricorn to Gemini is kind of like, you know, Capricorn's like, come on, sit down, we got to talk. Gemini, <laughs> especially with Mars, <laughs> is like, uh, maybe if we can have some fun, maybe if you can keep my mind um, entertained, maybe if you can connect some dots, maybe if we can look at this or that, you know, because maybe they want to stick with some dualistic. Both of these signs can be pretty dualistic, actually. Um, but on a completely different level, just don't forget this. Gemini rules the lungs. Mars kicks up energy. 
We don't have a connection right now between Neptune and Mars. But with the Sun up here in this inconjunct, this because remember, uh, inconjunct or quincunx, same thing, 150 degree aspect, it creates the need for an adjustment. Just remember that. And the adjustment is coming from the Sun in Capricorn shining a light on some rules that need to be adhered to if you want to protect your lungs because it's all kicked up. And, and this is what I've been saying. I've never, ever, ever since COVID hit said, oh, you don't need your mask anymore. I keep saying ad nauseum, <laughs> wear your damn mask everywhere you go. But you don't see that. You know, you don't you don't see that. And and I guess the good thing is is if you're fully vaccinated uh, and boosted and boosted again, if you get it, you won't you won't probably have to go to the hospital. But you're gonna be down a couple of weeks. I mean, who wants that? For one day for one hour of fun with somebody or one day? I mean it, I, I don't know. This is me, but to me it's not worth it. But maybe it is for others, and um, it, that's up to them. Again, back to your own sovereignty, your own integrity, your own authority to run your own life the way you want, right? So there's that. And, and Mars to Capricorn, you know, Mars to Saturn will give you, because Saturn rules Capricorn, uh, will give you that flavor of like, who are you to tell me what to do with my life? And I hear you. So, so you do whatever you want. <laughs> Excuse me. And some people have super, super, super immune systems that are just not going to catch anything anyway. <laughs> you know what I mean? They maybe wouldn't even need the vaccine. So so there's there's that to consider. And no one can make those choices for you, and I like that. Um, okay, so what else? Let's see. As far as what's going to last all week. Uh, and, and this one won't. It, this is just, but it's kind of kicking off the new year, right? Until Neptune gets out of Pisces in 20, I think it's 2025, I'm, I'm hesitant on, you know, because we're talking wet. I'm hesitant when it comes to um, weather patterns, you know, like heavy rains and hurricanes, and I'm hesitant when it comes to, um, um, you know, droplets that come out of people's mouths <laughs> and into into my eyes or up my nose or god forbid in my mouth that kind of thing right so uh, okay so let's look at let's just finish off for to no wait let me do this one first uh the moon is exactly see this 11 to 11 oh, don't you love that <laughs> is exactly opposing the south node so, and it's in Taurus, no less. So remember, Venus rules Taurus and Libra. But uh, so uh, kind of put Venus here when you're reading the energy and conjunct the moon. The moon wants to connect. Venus wants to connect too. Venus, Venus loves relationship and wants to connect. And that's the path that we're heading on with the North Node, right? It's all about bliss and harmony and Venus and especially Taurus, is all about safety. Now, with Venus ruling Libra, that's more about, uh, that part of Libra is more about connecting and being with others and having fun and being very social. But with um, Taurus, it's more about safety first. So I'm thinking that, and especially with the trine up here to the sun, this triple trine up here to the sun, I'm, I'm thinking that people are trusting the flow of wanting to relate, <clears throat> but they're starting to think more about safety first. And that's possibly because of, um, you know, because of, of with Uranus and Taurus, Uranus is uh, still retrograde, and uh, connecting back to the south node there, because it's, it's going back, well, the nodes go backwards too, but <laughs> yeah, which one moves faster, right? I think it's I think it's the nodes. Uh, so let's see. When does when does Uranus when yeah, I think Uranus comes out of its retrograde retrogradation 
Um, I think I think it's in May, if I remember right. Oh, I told I could be losing it. The only thing I do remember is that it it makes it all the way to um, it made it to Fort. I mean, I think it makes it to eighteen. Oh well, I should just wait and look it up and then let you know next week. Um, I probably have it. I bet I have it over here in a clipboard way over on my desk over there, and I just don't need to go looking for it right now. The important thing this week to hold in your consciousness is that Uranus represents freedom and your individual unique freedom. And with this stellium here in Taurus, so we're because of the connection with the south node, this is safety first, this is inventions, this is all the inventions towards safety that we've had, all the new ideas, all the original new ways of of being safe, more safe in the world. And a lot of it has to do with, I would think, sex scandals coming out. Remember what Harvey Weinstein is going through? So women are more safe now that these... Because when these cases go to court, it, it sets precedence. And then uh, from there, it makes it harder on the next dirt bag that comes along or that's been in operation for years. So anyway, money and sex scandals are within the polarity of um, Taurus to Scorpio. And so people's personal money and then how they share it and mix it with others and their resources within others uh, with Scorpio. So with Uranus there, things are shaken up, disrupting, breaking things apart, and creating new new um, new ways of protection in the future because of the wisdom of the past because we've been there before, and it, you know it's time like I said for the new laws. Now with this triple trine up here, right to um, oops, so so it's it's your honest trining. It's <laughs> It's, I should say it this way, it's the moon, the north node, and Uranus trining the sun. Okay, so it's pretty much, you know, just for the next day or so, so Sunday and Monday, because you can see the sun's at 10 degrees, it, it moves one degree pretty much every day, and I'm, the moon will clock in, and and so we're in this experience of wanting because remember the moon wants it wants to connect it needs to attach to something it needs to respond it's very intuitive it rules our our parents our home our parents especially moms saturn can be the dad but often it's parents you know with the the moon and it's the public mood and it's also i uh, you know, it's just basically how we respond, and we want safety, and we want safety in our home, and we've experienced not having that in the past, and we don't want it to be that way anymore, and that's the reason for, <laughs> I believe, our adventure with uh, Uranus conjunct the North Node. Now, uh, remember, of course, you know, we've been going through COVID together with this aspect. So with the moon coming in today in Taurus, I think this is setting up the whole year uh, with the moon conjunct the North Node and then it's going to hit Uranus. I think it's all about so many people waking up to the fact that we need to be thinking ahead of time when we're going to travel. We need to be not forcing ourselves to do something that maybe weather can't handle or maybe the Earth can't handle anymore, right? Um, there still is, you know, climate change, which creates extreme weather. So we have to hold that in our consciousness anytime we want to travel. We can't just jump in our car without a go bag. We never should have, but a lot of people don't even think that way. And, you know, we need to be careful. If there's snow on the ground, we shouldn't be driving the same speed. They, you know, it's always it's always about the conditions that you know that's on every cop's like ticket book. It, you know, when they pull you over, what were the weather conditions, right? 
That's there for a reason, because we're supposed to be using our using our noggins. <laughs> so, okay, but so for I'm I'm gonna move forward just to not make so much into the um onto this one chart because these other aspects are going to be sticking with us uh, all week. So I'm going to go ahead and move forward there. Okay, so the one I want to hone into is this aspect of the architect here from the south node. So remember the south node's the past and then up to the sun is, is now at 11 degrees. 11 to 11, right? We're talking an exact sextile. So opportunities to shine your light and manifest what you want based on the wisdom of the past, and you don't want to create crisis anymore. And then um, this north node here at 11 degrees. So it's this one here that's connecting up. But we still have the triple trine from up above down here to the moon and Uranus, right? Like This is a lot. So, so we're talking... Well, let me let me break it down this way quickly first. This aspect of the architect between the south node, the sun, and the north node. So, and then the opposition, because the nodes always oppose each other, of course. This brings into this tight orb, like I said, the your ability to manifest what you want to bring into this new year and leave out maybe some things from, you know, the, that were with you last year and you don't want to keep... <laughs> Maybe it's a process of elimination, because Capricorn certainly can do that, and so can Scorpio, right? Elimination is, is Scorpio's game. It's like, nope, been there, went through a bunch of crises, had a bunch of tower moments, and nope, not partying down with those people again, I'm not taking that into my life, not, uh, you know, letting go of reading the fine print, especially with Mercury retrograde, we want to always be careful of that. Uh, and then having more control of your own life that leads you on your new path, which is safer than ever. More safety is what Taurus wants, always. More safety so that, that you always have that self-preservation, those instincts. Uh, Taurus wants people to be faithful to those. Uh, you know, Taurus, it, like if you know somebody that's got a strong Taurus or that's you know, a, a healthy Taurus, they're not going to be the ones on the freeway driving like an idiot. They might be going a little slower than you want, but they're not, they're not going to be putting you into danger. That is a true Taurus. Now, um, yeah, they don't like being pushed either. So, so security, safety, self-preservation, and new ways to find those uh, things in your life especially with the moon crossing over Uranus, still in Taurus. It, this is, you know, the first two days of the year are just so wonderful for being in all the, the states of bliss with like yummy food, comfort around you. Uh, for, for my friends down under, it might be really beautiful times for celebrating outdoors and uh, and then for us here in the northern hemisphere, we're probably enjoying the sun when it's out and hunkering down when it's cold, and it's okay either way. It's just life. But so there's that. With this stellium up here again, Venus on the other side, it's getting Venus will move into Aquarius. I'll show you that chart coming up. I uh, but it's on its last, you know hours of um, of this connection with Pluto. So I'm thinking by this point, those who have had some intense encounters and uh, maybe, you know, maybe some surprise relationship came through and you didn't expect it and you're like, oh, okay. <laughs> wow, let's look at this one. Or let's let's try this. And, and you do, well, that it's great because, uh, you know, remember Capricorn being ruled by Saturn can certainly just think Saturn's cement. It can certainly cement relationships, Venus, together in a powerful way. Pluto, catch my drift there. But 
when Venus moves into Aquarius, then there's going to be a lot of thinking outside the box. And because Aquarius and Sag, they're not necessarily signs for um, commitment. <laughs> they can be a little bit commitment phobe, you know. So, uh, yeah. So hopefully nobody went and got married with Venus and <laughs> Venus and uh, with that little adventure, you know, with Venus to Pluto. Um, but then again, if it's somebody you've been in a relationship with for years and you've been, you know, it's like, well, why don't we get married? This is stupid to not be married. You know, it might be behoove us to be, <laughs> might be some tax benefits, right? Things like that. Then maybe that would just be the perfect um, transit for them to uh, put it put it into concrete form. <laughs> So, okay, all the other aspects you notice are the same. We still have the squares. Venus is out of that square to Eris now and working her way, like I said, to Aquarius. Uh, the sextiles to the um, Neptune sextile Mercury is still there, and it's exact now, actually, today. That's beautiful. I... Uh, so remember that for Monday could be a really good day for all creative pursuits. All kinds. And, um, yeah, that's the same. I don't know. I'm not going to mess so much with that sesqua square to Mars. It's just not that strong. I, it could just be some stubborn thinking, you know, and that's all I need to say about that. Uh, Saturn is squaring the moon today. That's important. Okay, so the moon in Taurus, remember, like I said, a bunch of times already, or I said a lot, I should say, about needing to feel secure, and then, and needing to feel valued. And then over here with, with Saturn and Aquarius, it's like, hmm, I don't know. They're ghosting me. I uh, I don't know if we're on the same wavelength. Uh, maybe I want something different than they do, and I have to just be okay with that and let it go. I uh, nobody gets what they want by pushing usually, unless you're you know a narcissist, and if that's the case, I doubt you're watching. <laughs> it, I just don't think we we vibe. <laughs> So the other important, I think I'll go ahead and move on, and then I want to I tune into those little semi-squares there because they do matter. Okay, so Tuesday, let's tune in here first, and then I'll, go, I'll look at the moon and the other. So Jupiter here, okay, with um, this semi-square over to Uranus. Remember, semi-squares require action. It, it's like, you know, you have an itch. If you, you know, if usually if you don't scratch it, it won't go away. Sometimes it will. Sometimes it's, you know. Anyway, in order to get what you want and move forward, because Jupiter is trying to bring you into your, the pre, bring, bring you into presence, bring you into what you want, they want Jupiter's trying to help you be more daring and hopefully create win win situations because Jupiter's in Aries polar opposite is Libra, right? So that would be bring in that win win balance. But with this semi square here to Uranus, there's there's tension, there's that need to do something if you want that freedom in your life. If you want safety and security in your life, you're going to have to, you might have to fight for it. You're going to have to step up and do something. You can't just sit and meditate on it. You do need to meditate on it too, or at least be thinking about it, you know, a couple hours a day. But if you're meditating on it, thinking about it, and working on it, then that's when you get it. That's when things come through. And it's because you believe, Jupiter believes, it's all about belief with that planet, that you deserve it in Aries. And as Jupiter moves closer and closer to Chiron, it's not there yet. I mean, we're, we've got uh, just that 10-degree orb there, but it won't be long. 
before we know it, we're going to be talking about healing, deeper issues, deeper inner conflicts that keep you from getting what you want. Now, with Eris, so Eris is just going to sit here, okay? And all the other planets are going to move around and make aspects to it because it's not going anywhere. <laughs> Remember, I said 500 and some years to get around. And it's in this semi-square to Mars, right? And what Mars is all about is motivation. It's it's the planet to look at in our charts and, and look at the sign and, and go in the house that it's in and go, oh, yeah, eh, look, look at that. You can decipher it down into, that is what I really want. You might not want to face up to it, and you might want to work through a bunch of things to get it, and that's fine, but... Um, Mars is motivation. Mars is something we will fight for. Mars helps us uh, get going. It um, is willing to, you know, work hard, usually. It's our fight for independence. It's our, uh, the energy for independence. And if there's a conflict, then, yeah, I mean, you just deal with it. Uh, it sometimes or often, rules, no, always rules. One of the things that rules is the military. And um, any competitions, like uh, any athlete will often have a very strong Mars or Mars conjunct the sun or, you know, Mars in a strong sign. And, uh, yeah, just any, any, just think of the fighting spirit is what I just heard, the fighting spirit. So, with a semi-square to Eris, <laughs> I mean, don't these two... Okay, so dwarf planet is what, an er, is what Eris is, and they reduce Pluto down to a dwarf planet, too. Mars is definitely a planet, of course, closer, much, much, much closer to Earth. And, but they both are the, of the same quality. It's just that this one's more masculine, this one's definitely feminine. So I think that this is uh, quite a bit of uh, action that needs to be taken to bring these two forces together. Because this one wants to just go, and it's my way or the highway, and I'm sick of, you know, taking back, you know, back seat, or I'm not sitting in the back of the bus anymore, right? That one, Rosa Parks. And <laughs> and then Mars and Gemini is over here going, oh, okay, well, now that you've asserted yourself, now I've got something to think about. And do I want to, is, do I want to join forces, you know, with this, this energy? So basically, I think a lot of people will say yes. I think a lot of people would get behind that. Uh, let's see, what else? Venus, it, now I should have started out this way, but I was tuned in down here. So 6.28 p.m. Monday, January 2nd, Venus moves into Aquarius, okay? And you can see her right there. Um, so, yeah, because it's zero degrees to eight. Yeah, there we go, right? Sextile, at first I'm looking at it going, wait, what? But no, it is, it's right there. So Venus talking to Neptune. <laughs> it's beautiful. Venus is personal love. Neptune is impersonal spiritual love. Right? So we could have like absolute love and human love joined together. There's the opportunity for that. So I really feel like this is going to be a wonderful transit. I also feel like this is going to be a wonderful first week of the the new year, and we have the full moon coming in in a little bit, too. Um, you can see Saturn's sextile, Eris is still there and will remain, so I don't need to keep talking about that. Chiron is now square Mercury. Still within, looks to me like it's still within orbit of the sun, too. Um, so... Yeah, Chiron at 11. 
connecting with, yeah, the square up here, yeah, 11 to 12. That's right, so that's still the same. Okay, good. Scared me for a second. I'm like, wait. Sometimes looking in at all the lines, it's really hard to focus in on which one, or often it is hard. So Chiron square, and I could print out like a grid, you know, thing to look at along with it, but I don't know. I'm, it's like I waste enough paper and ink as it is. If I could handle staring at a screen for this long to tune into each one, I would, um, you know, just do a screen share on my computer. But it's just, it really gets to my eyes. This is so much easier. Otherwise, I, I can't, like, be on my phone and keep connected with you guys the rest of the day because it just, it's hard on my eyes. I have weird eyes. <laughs> I've always had weird eyes. <laughs> trouble with the sun, you know, always had blackout sunglasses when I got older, and as a little kid, I was always the, the baby that looked like she was dying because the sun was in her eyes, you know. <laughs> Any car ride, I'd fall right to sleep because looking out the window with the sun coming in. Yeah, well, that was life in Southern California. Always too much sun. So anyway, Venus newly into Aquarius is what I want to focus on, only the aspects to her today. So down here we've got the, we've got two, well shoot, it's the moon. This is beautiful. What a beautiful flow of energy here. So from Venus down here to the moon, 29 degrees Taurus, Venus rules Taurus like I said before. But Pluto is also in this trine down here to the moon. So the moon is really reflecting back the beauty that's possible and the power of the beauty that's possible. The, the power of the harmony and relationships that we can create. And the moon at 29 degrees is at the, uh, oh my goodness, only what, how many degrees to get to zero? To get to, because there is no, you know, 30 degree, it'll be, um, the moon will be in Gemini very soon. So, but this was happening like all day long, this buildup, because this is 6.28 p.m. So this buildup was happening all day long. And so coming off of Uranus with all these new ideas for safety and security and self, um, self-love, self-worth, now in this late degree, with the moon in the late degree, 29 degrees of Taurus, brings in that this is powerful here, very, very powerful, and then up to Pluto is extremely powerful. Both of these are earthly signs. Capricorn's cardinal, um, the moon in Taurus is fixed, but you know, with Capricorn, it's still, to me, it's like so solid, you know. It's like, imagine a, a, a mountain or a solid piece of, like a sculpture or something like that, you know. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, so what we value and our self-worth and how empowering that can be and then the relationships that we connect to with Aquarius, because we have to remember Aquarius is all about, well, first of all, it rules science, right? So it makes sense to me that we did, you know, have some, well, here with um, uh, Uranus ruling Aquarius and also the ruler of science itself, <clears throat> excuse me, in Earth sign Taurus, this is, uh, you know, the uh, invention, although they only did it once and it has to be worked with immensely before it can be commercialized. But, you know, the, the fusion energy, it's safe, free energy that just continues on and, and builds upon itself. So that, that is what Aquarius is all about. Okay, and we can expect that to continue to, to grow and build over the years. And also, um, Aquarius is about new original ways of moving through life, new original experiences. On the deepest level, I see it as being very humanitarian, you know, in, in the highest levels, in the deepest tiles, same thing, like in the essence of what Aquarius really is is uh, 
be treating each other's humane, treating each other humanely, uh, each of us feeling that everyone deserves the same thing that we want. You know, we shouldn't want something that that um, we don't want for others, right? I and it it's also about getting outside of the box, of course. It has everything to do with humanitarian breakthroughs. And I feel like this we can apply this because it's Venus. We can apply this to all things that bring in harmony, and especially for women. These are very humanitarian, you know, feminine uh, aspects here. So that's wonderful. That is really wonderful. Okay, so let's go ahead... You can see how Mercury is separating more and more away from Pluto, moving towards the sun. And the sun's moving towards Mercury. But it'll only make it, I think it goes back to 8 degrees, if I remember correctly, I think. Yeah, and then it'll go direct. But the sun's, the sun will catch up to Mercury before Mercury, you know what I mean? Yeah. You know what I mean, Vern? <laughs> And notice that we still have that beautiful aspect of the architect. Well, let's go ahead and move forward into Thursday. Remember this one that I talked about, right? So, so here, here we have the wisdom of the past and the spotlight of the present and shining the light down to the freedom of the new future that we want to, that we want to create. Isn't that lovely? I love it. it's how it's sticking. Let me look all the way to the end. Let's see, is it is it here all the way to the end of the week? No. How many days do we have? Let's see. Wednesday. Yeah. Okay. So it's it's over. We we are done with it on Wednesday. So we need to make use of this time, right? Because this is an aspect of the architect. That means you can build something, right? <laughs> <laughs> what do you want to build? What do you want to create? What do you want to manifest? What wisdom from the past have you learned about yourself and about life? And then what breakthroughs in your life? How do you want to reinvent yourself, maybe? It's, that's always possible. Uh, let's see, what else? Everything's the same. Mm, yeah. Yep. Of course. So now I'm going to just, I think for the rest of the week, probably just be tracking the moon. And you can see her down here close to Mars. So there's a lot, a lot. When you add those two together, a lot of talking and communicating. And she's in a natural trine between the two, these two air signs. Um, Venus and Aquarius. The other air sign over here is Libra. But I uh, with Mars in with Mars still in uh, Gemini, this is that need to, you know, protect protect your lungs, protect your um all well, your entire respiratory system, but also Gemini rules the arms and the shoulders and and like our intercostal, like intercostal, uh, like the ribs. It's not just the lungs, it's also the ribs. And um, like I said, hands, shoulders. Yeah. Eye hand coordination too. Um, yeah. So be careful about uh, emotional, I mean, emotional, what am I saying? <laughs> be careful about uh any injuries because emotions kind of, you know, got, um, what's, what's, I guess, sparked, I suppose, would be the way to say it. Another way this could play out, I mean, because it should be a nice, easy flow of connection and contact, but within relationships that also want the same thing you do. Because Aquarius and uh, Uranus can definitely be about group consciousness, especially Uranus. But with the connection here, it could turn into an argument because of the moon, you know. So this could be one of those, 
<laughs> One of those days where somebody says something the wrong way and you misunderstand or they say it the wrong way. And th because we have to remember, we're in Mercury retrograde, right? Mercury rules Gemini. <laughs> so, and, and we also have to remember that this Mercury retrograde is square to Eris. So it could be, yeah, oh my goodness. And it's also squaring Pluto because that's, yeah, that's going to be sitting there for quite some time. So just be careful when it comes to Mercury retrograde. The thing that you can probably count on, it doesn't mean that it's going to play havoc all over the place, but it does mean that you will be more, it's more likely for you to either misunderstand what someone says or for them to accidentally leave out words or say the wrong thing, and it's not what they're meaning at all. Uh, so we can misunderstand each other. It's a good time for, remember with retrograde, it's always a good time to re-something. So we could say, oh, can, wait, can you go back and repeat that? Because I, I didn't get it. I'm not sure if I got what you were saying. So don't be afraid to ask someone to repeat themselves and uh, and just so you can have clarity because this is this is all about clarity here, trying to trying to synthesize information and get clarity, trying to Mercury articulates and and Gemini questions. Gemini learns. Um, what you want to be careful of, is just avoiding confrontation. Allow yourself to just, you know, stay in your heart, right? Stay in your, your compassionate heart and then ask questions. And because I've experienced that so many times where uh, like Lisa and I will be doing our live stream and I notice that like a word cut off. Like I know she said something a certain way, but one word cut out. So then I have to ask her to repeat it. Or I'll notice it in the playback or something, because a lot of times I go back and, and read, because I miss a lot of the comments when, you know, we're reading. But I'll go back and reread the live chat, because you guys are hysterical. You're hilarious. And and then I'm listening to us at the same time I'm reading, and I, and I hear, like, words drop off. And it's like, oh, I know I didn't say that. So the online, and this would be an Aquarius... I'm mean, sorry, Uranus and Aquarius phenomenon, where, and it could happen on a phone too, where suddenly a word just drops off and then the whole sentence is taken the wrong way. It wasn't meant to be, uh, it was not said or stated that way. So be on the alert for that because that is primarily what I always experience during Mercury retrograde. Sometimes things will break down. Sometimes I'm, you know, well, always, no matter when, no matter when, doesn't it doesn't have to be Mercury retrograde. We should always be reading the fine print on contracts. You know, anything that's going to solidify us into uh, a long-term obligation is Capricorn territory. So we, you know, we want to be careful with that. Uh, what else? Let's see. Listening closely to politicians is another thing with this here, with this aspect, with Mercury Retrograde, especially to Eris, and especially when it comes to women's rights, and and younger people's rights, too. Uh, let's see. Yeah, and even the square... Let's see, wait. Yeah, the square still is going up to the sun. Well, sometimes when I look at, well, not sometimes, often, if you just tune into the glyph, look at the glyph of Chiron, it looks like a wheelchair, right? And it was, <laughs> it was discovered in 1977 when, when uh, the, the, the um, need for wheelchair ramps and, uh, you know, accessibility was happening all over the place. So, this could be with the, this um, square up here to the sun. All right, see that 12 degrees to 11 degrees there? Th this could be the sun bringing attention 
in very concrete ways as to how some government officials are doing things that work against the handicapped. And that needs to be stopped. And so with that square there, that would be that tension field. So, okay. Yeah, and especially with the adjustment needed there from the past, right? I think things are going to come out more about that. All right, so all the other aspects are the same. Uh, let's go to Wednesday. The moon's crossed over, so things are not so heated up. But it's in uh, the need for an adjustment here from Mercury to to the moon. So Mercury up here, the moon down here. I mm, I feel like it, at this point we're trying to reassess what has been said. Oh, I bet you there's a lot coming out about um, uh, more information from the January 6th report. It's already like the number one downloaded book or uh, purchase book, even it, with all of its like, I don't know, it's 845 pages or 850, I don't know, something like that. People are buying it. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, if, if I were gifted enough to be a screenwriter or a movie maker or whatever, you know what I mean? Like, I could bet you <laughs> that'd be a, a wonderful book to, to, to buy because <laughs> she would have so much material. Or documentary producer. So, okay, so all the other aspects are the same. Yep, all that up there. Venus is clocking along. Sun's moving closer to Mercury. These two are moving closer together. They're they're officially conjunct, I would say, even though I uh, so actually with this square to um well that's to Pluto. Yeah, we have to wait till the sun catches up there. Boy, I th I'm thinking that by the end of the month we're gonna have some very powerful um revelations that are going to make a lot of women even angrier than they already are. And I and I've always felt uh like it's the young women and the older women coming together to fight for uh you know, because we've been here, right? We've we've been here, and we like the, nobody that obtained a new right that they fought really hard for wants to get it taken away. So this, you know, Roe v. Wade removal, and this and these awful some of these states that are just so awful. Those things need to be changed, and so it's. I think those things are going to heat up this next year. They really do there. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so an adjustment is needed because somebody has something's out there. Something's out there, and and we're talking about it. Something's out in the public sphere, and we're talking about it. I'm thinking it has to do with politics, but it could be. It could be just that we learned something that we we th we thought that we already knew, and now we're realizing oh, uh, there's more to that. And I especially want to add in this aspect here to Saturn, right? So so Saturn also to the Moon. So again, uh, the government, politicians, the rules, the laws, you know, man-made law. We've got spiritual law with Neptune. Saturn is man-made law. They should work together, but they often don't. So this one takes a long time to get justice often with, with Neptune. Saturn can sometimes bring it in. But then again, you know, all, all justice takes, I mean, it takes so long to get through the courts. So anyway... Yeah, I think that's probably about it. There's been tons of energy gathering to learn all about these new things, and I feel like there's some breakthrough that comes. And then because of that, on Wednesday, we're having to adjust ourselves and maybe even think in a whole new way. And the sun trining down here as well. 
Sun trying Uranus, it's already it's already trying the North Node, and it's still there within Orb. But there's that spotlight there that creates a, a breakthrough, a concrete breakthrough. Yeah, and notice, like I said, that you know that uh, aspect of the architect is still there. Architect is still there. Okay, I think that's it. Let's look at Thursday. The aspect of the architect is gone. I that's still there. The in conjunct from Chiron, which necessitates um, the adjustment to work from your gifts rather than your wounding your gifts to the past. And the sun is still trining the north node and aquarius or north node and uranus so still the break the flow of breakthrough solid breakthroughs that can happen the moon is at 29 degrees gemini so it'll move into cancer probably by the end of the day and it's in this trying up to saturn so this this is nice here for uh, connecting the dots learning new things integrating, uh, bringing it all together. Because at it, it, uh, this ripe degree in Gemini, I think we've all learned something. Yeah. News dumps abound when we have the Sun conjunct Mercury. Although, you know, Mercury doesn't ever leave the Sun for uh, too far. It always stays pretty close. Um, but yeah, wow. So Jupiter is also squaring... So Jupiter, what we believe in, is in the tension field of the news that's coming out. So I'm thinking for some people it's, it's not going to be easy. And then Mars has backed in enough. Oh, no, wait, that was, all, that was there already. The moon to Uranus, that's a new one, though. So this semi-square here. It, you know, it's a minor aspect, but it's still there. And like I said, it's that, you know, that need for action is coming from, again, a discovery. And, and we're, we're learning something new because we've discovered something and we're, we're awake and go, oh, okay. And now we need to do something about it. And it's going to require courage and, again, action. And, and lots of talking, documenting, uh, data coming out that I think would be empowering women or or get women riled up to where they'll they'll fight harder than ever. Yeah. The sun is the sun still yeah the sun is still uh in that square to um well it's coming in even tighter actually to to squaring. So the sun is shining even more light. No, wait, that's Chiron. Well, it won't be long. As this, every day the sun moves closer this way, it's going to start uh, squaring. It's, it's within orb to um, Eris. So more to women's rights and empowerment than ever before. Okay, and then Friday, it won't be until 3.07 p.m. when it's legal, but I bet you, I bet you we were seeing a beautiful full moon. Uh, I'm not there yet, so I can't say. And if I get a cloudy day, I won't be seeing it. But anyway, January 6th, Friday, 3.07 p.m. Pacific is when the moon is at full, its fullest, its legal fullness, <laughs> at 16 degrees Cancer. So wherever 16 degrees Cancer is in your chart, whatever house, is that's the area of life where you can expect to have more... Uh, more pure, the pure flow of your feelings. You can expect to be more emotional too. You're going to want more security. You're going to want to protect yourself even more. It can bring up the past. It can bring up issues with your home, the environment you lived, you know, that you grew up in, the way it felt. It can uh, help you heal issues with your parents and uh, and the past, but. If you're going to hold tight to the, you know, resentments, I guess, and still, I mean, it's it's a good time to feel where you weren't cared for, where you um, weren't 
where you didn't have your real needs met, and the real needs are to be loved and to have pleasure and to be seen and heard and understood and to connect with others. And then if you have all those needs met and to the degree that you uh, heal those issues on your own growing up, then that turns into your creative self-expression. And so but to the degree that we're not willing to let go of the past and blame others, we're going to stay stuck. So if you're stuck anywhere, you're going to know it by this full moon. It'll, it'll help you know. And that's especially true because Mercury is, look at this, 16 degrees, 17 degrees. The messages that will help you create the structure of your, you know, the new life that you want to live in <laughs> uh, will have the full power of your emotional body and your core essence. The sun would be your core essence and the moon would be your emotional body. And from Cancer to Capricorn polarity, we're dealing with family and we're dealing with the public. We're dealing with our roots and then we're dealing with our work and our you know, um, reputation out in the world. How we participate with the world in Capricorn. And then how we go back home and take care of ourselves. You know? And both signs relate tremendously to boundaries. And with the full moon, let's zone into her. Look at this nice trine to the south node and then up to Neptune. That's a grand, it's almost a grand water trine. It's just that the, the you know, the degrees are not totally there. Well, it was before. No, no, because of Neptune. Yeah, no, we didn't have it. <laughs> we can't because of this end here. There's too many degrees between 11 and 22. But... She's down here at the focal point. The moon is at the focal point. So again, remember that the moon wants to intuit something. It wants to respond to how you feel. It, it helps us to feel our feelings. Uh, if we have any unpleasant emotions, like let's say we're in anxiety or we're feeling very insecure with cancer, that can sometimes be the case, or we're just pissed off you know, or we're resentful and we're blaming. What helps me, what always helps me is just to ask, what do you really want? What, what is it that you really want? What's behind that? You know, if, if it's resentment, maybe it's time to set a healthy boundary and say no. Uh, if it's anxiety, okay, what, what are you really afraid of? And then how can you how can you circumvent that from happening? Or maybe it's something that's completely out of your control and it's something to just clear out from the past. But to honor it because it probably is something that happened to you in, the, in a past life. But being with yourself in your presence and with your breath in your body will shift that as well. And again, you know, if you're angry, there's healthy anger. Healthy anger sets a boundary. Healthy anger is useful life force. We just don't want to hurt ourselves or hurt others. That, that's always the key. So also the, the moon, the full moon, no less, has a sextile. So we have the aspect of the architect here uh, from, from Uranus, right? And so this sextile from the moon to Uranus, that is a big breakthrough. And that is all about safety safety and security to just shine your light and be yourself because you've connected with yourself in the past and all in enough of your past lives to know that your feelings are value valid valid and valuable both valuable and valid and there is no need to um, be dependent on others to mirror to you how you feel and sometimes it's hard to find to figure out what you're really feeling those I remember going through that when I was a kid. If you don't have someone in your life mirroring to you that your feelings are valid, you're not going to value them and you're going to shut them down and numb out even further. And then as an adult, you have to go through all the stages of opening up to what you're really feeling and and then you feel confused. Okay, that's naming that just it that's something. You know that you're confused. 
And then why are you confused? Well, because somebody didn't mirror to you what, what was really going on within you, right? I mean, that's, that's confusing for a child growing up. So I, as adults, we're having to reparent ourselves constantly, and that is what cancer, the polarity to, from cancer to Capricorn is all about. And with Uranus here and that sextile, there can be major breakthroughs, major breakthroughs in that deeper wisdom that comes through with Scorpio, because Scorpio, above all, wants to go really deep, wants to uh, transform, wants to transmute, wants to be reborn like, like the phoenix out of the ashes. That's what Scorpio is. And Venus today, with the, with the full moon, or I should say this afternoon, yeah, today, that's good enough, is also trining, so Venus down here trining Mars, or I'm sorry, Mars down here trining Venus up there. <laughs> From Gemini to Aquarius, that's a beautiful flow of energy to think outside the box and doing new things and learning new things in uh, group consciousness, talking with our kindred spirits, you know, our friends. Uh, it, this should be a wonderful week for that. And maybe we're talking about new things that we learned about ourselves and, and how we grew up and we're unraveling the past, right? Unraveling the past. Unraveling with Uranus in the past with the uh, moon and Cancer. And Venus just sitting there in all of her love going, yeah, it's okay. Doesn't matter what happened. You're lovable. <laughs> Doesn't matter. You're lovable no matter what. Uh, let's see. The other aspects are the same. There's just a lot with this Mercury. Now, n mind you, of course, noticing the Moon is going to oppose, and we'll, I'll show you that in the next chart, is going to oppose Pluto. So things are going to powerfully be, uh, the energy and consciousness is there to powerfully transform something. But for now, with the full moon kicking off, this it's all about that uh, communication within because of Mercury to the Sun there. Like I said, core essence and emotional, you know, body. Okay, so... Now, Saturday, I clocked it at 4.55 a.m. Pacific. We have um, Sun conjunct Mercury retrograde. And now we have a triple opposition. See these three lines up here to the moon? I thought that was really important. So 4.55 a.m. Yeah, because the Sun's going to keep going towards... Um, towards Pluto. So let's let's talk about um, right and the all of these aspects are still that I talked about before. They're still an orb. Mars to yeah. Uh, the moon squaring Eris. Right? Okay. So I can see this one clearly. Oh my goodness. And then Venus squaring the south node here. Wow. Venus to the south. Yeah, the other ones are the same, but then there's that in conjunct to the moon. Okay, so the moon and Pluto are a lot alike. They both bring in rumblings from down below, <laughs> deep within. And, and it has to do with issues of power. Remember that Pluto, Pluto will either try to bury something or it will bring it to light. Pluto will help us uh, <laughs> bring something up and eliminate it, and then from there we're, we are more empowered. If we are willing to be honest with ourselves and allow ourselves to be humble and not need to be anything more than just an ordinary human being, then there's no need for power plays. But, you know, Pluto and Capricorn is known for narcissism. Capricorn itself is known for narcissism. So there will be, I'm thinking, with this triple opposition, some breakthroughs, because 
a lot of people are going to just start intuiting. A lot of people, and male or female, it doesn't matter. We're, we're, we are all sensitive and psychic and intuitive. It's just that some people aren't developed yet because they haven't done the work or, um, you know, they've numbed out because of trying to protect themselves. With this trying to Neptune, there's a lot of aspects to this to the uh, to the moon today. Even though it's all about the sun conjunct Mercury, <laughs> it's more about this. Now that I'm looking at this chart fully, it's more about the moon. So the moon over here trining to uh, Neptune is we're becoming even more sensitive, and with that with that focus, if you're not by this point, if you're not trusting your feelings and if you haven't done enough work to heal your emotional reactiveness from the past, an emotional reactiveness, an emotional reaction is always going to create a, um, a need for aggression. And passive aggressive is still aggression, you know, it's still passive aggressive behaviors are still aggressive. You're still trying to get something without being honest about it. Or it's going to create submission, where uh, I'll, I'll, I'll give you this, you give me that. Or it's always manipulation, right? Emotional reactions always create manipulations in relationships. They, emotional reactions allow us to be manipulated by others, or, or we're the ones manipulating them. The other way that we go when we go into emotional reaction, and the other thing that we do with that is withdraw. Like we ghost people. Um, and maybe that's what's necessary because you've already gone through it with them nine million times, you know, six ways to Sunday or whatever that is, you know, and you're just done. And that's up to them to heal from their side because you've set the healthy boundary on your side. But nobody likes to just be ghosted, you know what I mean? People want to know what I did wrong, usually. But now, if they're not, if they don't have enough courage to ask you what they did wrong, then that's, that's on them. That's them withdrawing from themselves. That's them in their own emotional reaction. So courage is needed to get to the place where you trust your emotional body. Your emotional body can't give you clear messages unless the emotions are flowing freely and they won't flow freely, the, the feelings won't flow freely unless you've done, and to the degree that you've done your emotional release work, emotional reactive work. And like I said, submission, aggression, or withdrawal. And, and aggression includes passive aggression. Covert aggression, you know, covert narcissism. So those are all defenses that we learned growing up. So don't beat yourself up about them. Don't judge yourself about them. Just just work to make the changes. That's all. And that's that's how you work. You know, work through all of any lower self tendencies too. Like if we're going to get into judging ourselves harshly, we're never going to be able to go deep enough to do the work. Uh, and that's usually the reason for the you know the numbing out. So with the trying to Neptune, there's the opportunity to go to the spirit world and your spirit within to get to the your emotional truth, your feel the truth of your feelings. What are you really feeling and why? And then have that courage to have that breakthrough and share that in your life, if need be, or however you want to share that, in whatever creative way or relationship way you want to share that with. And especially with this Venus trine Mars still there. Uh, and is it building an exact trine? Notice how Venus is that um, relationship-oriented Venus in freedom-loving Aquarius is moving towards an exact trine from 5 degrees to 8 degrees here. And Mars is moving back, so they're coming into a real tight uh, trine there, which is good. So let's see. I think that's about all I want to say with that one. Let's see. Yeah, it's just that with the in conjunct to Saturn, the quincunx to Saturn here, the last thing I'll say is that, uh, and especially with the squared airs, we're going to need courage and the adjustment's going to need to be made to take a stand for what you believe in and uh, who you want to be with. 
in certain groups. But, you know, be careful. Be, like I said, make sure that you're, uh, because Mercury's retrograde, make sure that you're understanding them correctly. And, uh, and, and then have that conversation if need be. Okay, so then later on in, in the day, Wait, that was, was that Saturday? Yeah, let me see, I think it's Saturday. Yeah, we're still in Saturday. That's right, because this is 2.33 p.m. Now that moon is legally exactly opposite Pluto. Is there anything different here? We still have the trine to Neptune. Yeah, so, so just to know that between 4.55 a.m. in the morning and 2.23 p.m., now these are Pacific times, in the afternoon, things are going to be building. The tension will be building. It's great, really, really great for inner work, for doing your own inner work to heal the past. But, um, and, and to the degree that you can do the work to heal the past, then you're more free to be in your power in the future and present, actually. You know, you can bridge. That's the thing is, you know, when you get into the present, the power of the presence, you know, your own presence within, there's no, uh, it's, it's like you overcome all uh, time-space continuum, right? Because in the spirit world, there's no such thing as time. It's all, it's all the same. I... Uh, so, yeah. There is a semi-square here to Venus, from Neptune to Venus. So some uh, actions going to need to be taken, I think, in the relationship area to make sure that you're hanging out with your spiritual buds. But, you know, see if you can do it in enough of a loving way to not um, create issues with um, the past. Right? Because we've got a tension field here to the south node. So Saturn, Neptune, yeah. Uh, now, on another level, even though these look like hard aspects, on another level, it can be exactly what you need in order to help you. I'm sorry. I said Saturn there and I meant Venus. In order to help you have that deeper spiritual connection. There might be more of a longing for that deeper spiritual connection. So, um, and then Venus opposing the moon later in the afternoon. Yeah, and that'll get tighter the more it goes over this way too. Especially when the moon hits into Leo on Sunday. Yeah, we're going to have the moon opposite Venus on next Sunday following too, so that's good. But for now, the sun is clocking ever closer to Pluto. And that means that there will be more illumination, more focusing in on. There's going to be more of, you know, like turn the <laughs> flashlight. The flashlight's right there on any, you know, awarenesses that we need to have about people who have. It's going to bring something to our attention about people who have, uh, I think, abuse their power, and then we, we might all have a lot of feelings around that, and especially women, and um, that's okay, because as long as we're willing to feel all of our feelings, but, but not, you know, like I said, I always say with the caveat of not hurting ourselves or others, then it's all good. In fact, it's very good because that's how you open up your intuition. Uh, yeah, your intuition comes from all those forces working together. Let's see. Is there anything else? I think that's about it, actually. I mean, there's a big buildup here. This moon opposing Pluto, that's a big buildup. Between your intuition, but then Pluto's also intuitive. Pluto can be psychic. The moon in Cancer is very psychic. And it will, should help. There should be a breakthrough eventually. Now, they could, there could be a very you know big confrontation here. Now, on the more mundane level, well, I don't know if you call this mundane, 
uh, well, mundane astrology is like, you know, political astrology too, but on the personal level, because it just talked about the political, on the personal level, this could be a, confront, uh, a confrontation because oppositions are often conflicts and confrontations. Like I've often said to you guys, like there's a mirror here and a mirror here, and are you see, are you getting the truth? Are you feeling met in that relationship? Is that relationship mirroring back to you, and especially with Venus here, mirroring back to you all the love and truth and good stuff that you are, or are they putting you down and they're, are, they, are they projecting onto you their own wounding, their own self-hatred, their own unhealed issues? And if that's the case, you might have to set them straight and set that healthy boundary. And then there will be that breakthrough because oppositions lead to breakthroughs. But it's usually not fun. There's usually confrontation and conflict along the way. But then once that's done... With the moon trying to Jupiter, there's some big expansion and healing, right? From over here to the moon, I mean, Jupiter and Neptune trining the moon is fantastic. There's some spiritual healing and then believing in yourself in a much bigger way because you said something you needed to say and now you can move forward. And now they know where they stand with you too. It's, it's nice, it's good to be honest. People want to know what's going on. Uh, let's see. Yeah, yeah. Venus is squaring Venus from six degrees to the north node, and it's starting to make a square to um, Uranus too. I'll talk about this quickly, and then I think we'll be done. Uh, yeah, because the other aspects are the same that I already spoke to, but Venus with a, a challenge here to right here, this one, to Uranus and soon to be, I'm sorry, Venus squaring the North Node, soon to be also a square to uh, Uranus, is again a challenge to, <laughs> it feels like, a, a person up here in relationship is thinking outside the box and has some great ideas, and then this one over here is like, Oh no, we, we have to, that we cannot. <laughs> it's too scary, right? And so there can be a little tension field there. But it can be a strength. It's good to think outside the box, but it's also really good to not do something stupid. Like, like this could be the kid that blows up the lab, and this one's over here going, No, wait, don't put that in there, All right? No, don't pour that in there. <laughs> There's strength here. So uh, safety first, I always say. But it's good to open up relationships in a way so that you you get a different... You're, you're taking in other people's um, ideas. You're understanding things that are unique and bit different, very different from you, maybe. So, yeah. And with this square up to... Or also from Venus... So Venus is in a T-square here to both of the nodes. So it's about new relationships breaking through. Yeah. Wow. You guys keep me posted. <laughs> okay. So I think I'm done. And I want to send you big, big hugs. Tons of love as always. And take good care. Have a wonderful, 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 and but please, most of all, safe New Year's. New Year's Eve and New Year's Day celebration. Okay. Bye.